Everyone on Super Earth that hasn't been living in a bug hole for the last day has already heard about the new Helldivers 2 Warbond slated for release this March 14th. It appears the developers have been true to their word that new Warbonds will be dropping on the second Thursday of every month. Today, we analyze everything coming in that Warbond relative to how these weapons performed in the original Helldivers and try to work out how these weapons will fit into Helldivers 2 and whether they can resuscitate the ailing state of the current meta. This Warbond, titled Cutting Edge, is centered largely around energy weapons. It brings the ARC-12 Blitzer Shotgun, the LAS-16 Sickle, the SG-8P Punisher Plasma, and the LAS-17 Dagger. It also brings us the G-23 Stun Grenade. Alongside this, we get three new armors and three new capes. So let's get into the meat of this, which is the weapons. The ARC-12 Blitzer Shotgun is a new weapon to the Helldivers series and will be the only electric primary in the game as of its release. It could be a spiritual successor to the AC-5 ARC shotgun from the original game. The original's description reads, The AC-5 uses the same charge-building setup as the AC-3, but instead of discharging at a specific target, it tries to saturate an area in front of the user with electricity. This application has limited range, but the damage output is enough to completely fry light and medium targets. The stats suggest a weapon which requires a charge-up period, much like the arc thrower, and suffers from very short range and slow fire rate to compensate its tremendous firepower against light and medium targets. Given the current meta favoring the arc thrower for terminids, this leaves a large potential for a new meta weapon for bug hunts. Currently, the viable options are the Breaker, Breaker Incendiary, and Slugger, depending on your personal proclivity. This gun, assuming you're careful with your shots to avoid TKing the entire squad, could create another new viable option. That said, be wary of quick play matches as you're likely going to see a lot of friendly fire in the first week. It might be a good idea to load out with a personal shield for a while to not get massacred by trigger happy kids. The last 16 Sickle meanwhile returns from the original Helldivers. This weapon is an energy based assault rifle. In Helldivers 1, the weapon description reads, This carbine is based on laser technology, but modified in an attempt to get something more similar to a conventional assault rifle. It fires short laser bursts and builds up heat more quickly than the LAS-5 Scythe. The trade-off is higher burst damage, but a shorter firing time. It should function as an energy weapon, that is to say it can overheat, but theoretically have infinite ammo if used correctly. Its unupgraded stats suggest a reasonably powerful primary with a small mag capacity and tendency to overheat quickly, so it will likely be more useful against the bots than the bugs. This is likely why the trailer is showcasing it doing bot assaults. My guess is it won't have the sustained firepower to do much to the Terminid Horde, so use it accordingly. The SG-8P Punisher Plasma, try to say that five times quickly, is another new addition to Helldivers, the second plasma-based primary following the somewhat underwhelming Plas-1 Scorcher. The trailer showcases this weapon firing in a manner more similar to an underslung grenade launcher. There is a tremendous round drop off over distance and it appears to function more as a zoning and AOE weapon. My guess is that friendly fire and self deletion will be high with this weapon so its utility will be very limited during horde rushes against the terminids. The trailer showcases it taking on automatons and that's likely where its dominant utility will be, taking out hordes of marauders and foot soldiers in a single round from medium range. With any luck, its explosive damage will also make it a good weapon against striders and devastators. With lots of luck, it could be a great way to take out stationary turrets and even heavies like hulks and tanks from their respective weak spots. If you enjoyed this weapon analysis so far, you're going to absolutely love our direct stress test next week as these come out, so make sure you're subscribed not to miss it. Because we're growing stratospherically right now, less than 1% of you guys are subscribed to the channel, which means you're missing all the notifications as we release these. The LAS-7 Dagger is another new addition to the universe, being the first laser sidearm. What we can tell from the footage so far is, pew pew, lasers. It looks really cool in sci-fi, which is always a big selling point for me. If it functions like the other two laser weapons, it will likely be heat based rather than ammo based and give you a sidearm to fall back on, which technically has infinite ammo. My guess is that it will be offset by relatively poor damage performance, and given that sidearms are usually used as a last resort to try to keep oneself alive in a retreat, it's unlikely to become a meta option, but we have to wait and see. Saving the best for last, however, the G23 stun grenade is what has me really excited. I'm a sucker for zoning utility grenades, and this looks like a shoe in replacement for the incendiary grenade. A great way to give you a short reprieve from bot charges and let your team hunker down and bring their firepower to bear. It will likely pair really well with mortar sentries and the new plasma shotgun for incapacitating and then mopping up bots. 
It may also be useful for zoning bugs in their own breaches, which should hopefully make the higher difficulty level terminated missions more manageable. A potential S-tier grenade in the works? We'll find out next week during our stress test. The armors, meanwhile, are likely to be superficial vanity options, as there's no news about an armor stat revamp. Currently, the armors on rotation are essentially just reskins, sharing many of the same modifiers, and despite the new armor rating fix, light armors continue to reign supreme in Helldivers 2. With any luck, we'll see another tweak to armor performance to make these new cosmetics functionally viable, but for the time being, the Legionnaire armor continues to essentially be the meta for everything, given its tremendous speed, throwing distance increase, and fortification of limb health. You can get this one on rotation in the Superstore, and it's the armor I run in almost all my footage. On top of this, we have three new capes, which it's safe to say are going to be purely cosmetic. The game dearly needs more cosmetics to help differentiate Helldivers, so this is a welcome addition. I also like that they're playing around with different colour schemes so that we're not always locked into the game's standard black and gold or black and orange palettes. While we don't want to break the game world with Helldivers running around in teal and fuchsia armors, much as that would excite me personally, it's good that they're giving us a greater variety of cosmetic options so that we can build a unique look for our dives. No news of mechs coming alongside the Swarbon, so we'll have to wait and see. It's possible that the mech update will just be a free stratagem update for all players rather than being locked behind a premium warbond, which is definitely the correct play in my opinion. If mechs end up being profoundly game and meta changing, that should be something all players have access to, regardless of whether they've farmed super credits or want to pay for a battle pass. What are your thoughts? Impressed by the guns we have coming or no? Make sure you're subscribed to catch our stress test of all these weapons shortly after their release on March 14th, and as always, dive with liberty and I'll see you on the ground.